Hey everyone, this is Aurora with Supercharged Science, Homeschool Science Curriculum and Programs for K-12. through And this is actually part two. Uh, we did part one where we talked about the numbers, the important numbers that will tell you everything you need to know about a telescope and binoculars. But another question came up quite a bit. I got a slew of emails that said, hey, what accessories do I need? So I'm gonna answer that one in this quick Facebook Live. So if you have questions as we go along, just type them in the comments. Uh, again, my name's Aurora with Supercharged Science. So what are the accessories that you need when you do astronomy? So quite frankly, you don't need a whole lot. You just need a dark sky and you go outside with a bowl of popcorn and an app that tells you what's up in the sky and you learn the constellations. That is the best thing. So please don't feel like you have to run out and buy stuff. These, this is for people that have gone beyond binocular astronomy and who have a telescope or are looking to purchase one and they're wondering what else do I need? Okay, so this is for, this is not just if you just are started. So these are people that are knee deep in astronomy and they want more. Okay, and by the way, if you are looking to get notified when we go live, make sure you like us and you um, uh, you uh, follow us. I think that's it. And then every time we go live, you'll get a little notification. Hey, Aurora from Supercharged Science is live. So make sure you do that as well. Okay, so I have my case of goodies down here, and I'm sure hoping nothing falls out when I show this to you. So here's one of my optics cases, and I'm going to go through the parts that's in here. And this is the one, I have a couple of them. But this is the one I will take when I go stargazing. Okay, so the first thing that we have is a headlamp. And this headlamp can go white and red. The red um, makes it possible for my um, pupil not to, get, uh, not to get too small. Okay, the way white light does. The second thing is a star finder. So this is in place of the finder scope on a telescope. You simply take it off and you plug this thing in, and what this is, is it projects a beam of light onto the sky, a little laser point on a dot on the sky. And what's cool about this is sometimes, depending on the type of scope you're using, the image is upside down and backwards. And so you have to mentally remember, like, oh, if I go this way, really I'm going this way, and it can be confusing. These are a little bit easier. So these are easy finders. I got mine from Orion Telescopes. No, I do not get a commission from Orion. <laughs> okay. So I love looking at the moon. So you're gonna need one of these, which is a polarizer. And it looks like two little circles, but when we take them out, watch this really cool thing happens. By the way, you can do this experiment with your kids with a um, pair of eyeglasses. You take two polarized sunglasses, uh, sunglasses and you put one over the other and you just rotate them. And there'll be a point where it just um, completely blocks the light and turns completely black. And that's exactly what this is doing. Because the moon, do you see it here? You can kind of see through it, and then I'll rotate it, and you see how I can't see through it anymore. And then I'll rotate it, and then now you can kind of see through it a little bit, not terribly well, and then I'll rotate it, now it blocks it. Because the moon changes brightness from night to night, right? Uh, honestly, from hour to hour, um, we wanna be able to adjust that. So this is like sunglasses for your telescope. So this is a must especially if you're going to be looking. Because um, if you look up to almost about half um, uh, to where the moon looks like a big D, where it's just um, uh, first quarter, so where it's just halfway illuminated. So um, you can look at it without a polarizer, but anything beyond that, I mean, you, know, you ever try to look at the full moon through a telescope? It's like, yo! <laughs> right? It's super bright. This will help with that. Okay, so write that down, polarizer. Somebody type that in the comments for me, will you? Just type in polarizer. Okay, we started also type in headlamp, and who feels like typing? Go ahead and type for me. Nobody ever does this, but go ahead and do it anyway. So we got easy finder, laser scope, um, polarizer, okay. And then, if you live in the city, you might be interested in a sky glow filter. Um, these can be hit or miss. It depends on the type of light pollution you have. So sky glow filters can look like this. They can look like, I've got some from Lumicon, which is a super awesome company. Um, so it will filter out certain, um, certain wavelengths of light and make it easier to see certain types of things. So you, you kind of have to play with this and see. The best way to do this is honestly to go to a stargazing party to see um, and borrow other people's filters and see which ones you like best. Um, if you're gonna look at things like the Orion Nebula, you wanna get an uh, oxygen filter. This is an O3 filter, little teeny one. And this goes on the eyepiece and this will make it, so when you initially you look at the Orion Nebula, 
it, it's amazing. And then you put this on there and suddenly it fills the whole eyepiece because you weren't able to see, your eyes couldn't detect all the, the it basically will make the invisible visible um, using an oxygen filter. Okay, so those are other things that I have. Now, what else do I have? Oh, I've got eyepieces. What size eyepieces? I actually have, these are super wide. I don't think they make lanthanum anymore. These are 65 degree, that's the field of view. Um, long eye relief, up to 20 millimeters. These were made in Japan. Japan makes awesome eyepieces. I have, the ones I use the most is the 17 and the 22 with my particular telescope. Do you remember we talked about how to figure out which ones are best for what? So all around stargazing, I use a 17. Um, so if I need to zoom in or zoom out, I will change my eyepieces. And I also have an eight. I barely use this thing. It's so hard to look through. Okay, other things. Now this is cool, especially this gives a big ooh wow factor, especially when people come up to my telescope. I will put a cell phone in here and this locks on, let me show you my tripod. So I have a tripod for, um, for kids to play with. Um, and so it's got this L bracket here. So this bracket I can put on my binoculars. And this will help so the kids can see it and I can raise and lower this thing when I unlock it here. So a lot of people still don't know how to point things, right? So I'll usually have a telescope or something that they can play with and it goes up and down like that. So what I'll also do is I'll put this on here and then I'll put, I don't know if I can do it backwards here. So I'll put this on here and then I will put the binoculars on like this. And what that does is it enables the viewers to see what they're pointed at. So I can attach it. Yes, I can attach it. There we go. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that when you come up to this, you're going to see a cell phone here that has an app that's loaded and wherever we're pointed, the binoculars and the app, it will show you what's pointed up in the sky. So this will help people figure out where to point things because it will say, oh, point more this way or oh, point more down and, and that will enable it. So it's just a, a holder for a cell phone that I've, that I've mounted on, um, on here with the binoculars. So that's something that's super cool. Okay, so that's another thing. Now, if you wanna look at the sun, first of all, usually don't. <laughs> I would go to a star party where somebody else has already figured out how to do this. But if you want to, what you need to do is you take this off. You take the finder scope off. And what you do is you, you use a giant filter that's custom made for your telescope. Mine looks like this. And what you do is it fits over the end and then you put an eyepiece in. And so you don't have a finder scope. How do you find the sun? When this is in place, it will reflect 99.9999, like four nines, of the light back, and so it doesn't come into your telescope. And what it will allow you to do is just get a thin thread of light through the eyepiece. Now, for those of you who maybe if you found in a swap meet somewhere, they don't sell these. They haven't sold these in 30 years. But there will be a tiny little solar filter you can put on your eyepiece. Don't do that because there's too much light energy, too much heat that comes in. It can crack your optics. So the, you need to get um, kick most of the sunlight out. Don't let it come into your telescope. So this is here. This is off because you don't want a kid looking through here. What are you seeing? And suddenly, right, they've burned the back of their retina and now they're permanently blind. So you take this off and then you look at the sun this way. And I did a whole bunch of Facebook lives on how to do this. Look at my video archive. I've shown you all kinds of different things. The way you do it is you look at your shadow of the telescope and whenever the shadow is the smallest, that's how you're pointed at the sun and then you can do some solar observing. Right now the sun's been pretty boring. Um, so you can, it looks like a big yellow beach ball. Um, when the sun is at solar maximum, it's awesome because you can see flares, you can see sunspots, you can see all kinds of activity on the surface atmosphere of the sun, which is super amazing. Okay, so, and those come in all shapes and sizes. I have a smaller one here. See this teeny little one? <laughs> that one goes to, telescope. This is a small 80 millimeter telescope and it has a little one just like that. Okay. Now if you want to take images of what you're looking at, you probably want one of these. They're like 10 bucks and they fit onto 
Let's move this guy out of the way. They fit on to where the eyepiece goes. And so what it does is it'll, um, when you have an eyepiece here, it locks onto the eyepiece and then holds your phone and it holds the camera part of the phone right over this hole and it will look down. So now the camera's looking down into here and then you can adjust it and, and um, I would recommend a better camera app that you can get for your phone. So you can adjust like the ISO and you can adjust the exposure and um, all of those things. So you can get just the right settings for astrophotography, um, which is easy to do. It's a lot cheaper to do. Now you're not gonna get beautiful Hubble pictures, <laughs> but you will get some amazing pictures. I would start small, like with the moon. Um, so you can get a camera um, adapter or you can just duct tape something on there and hope that it works. Okay, so how are we doing so far? Is this useful? Okay, so there's a couple of other things that you can get if you have, let me see if I can find it. Here it is, okay. One and two, okay. So this is a Barlow. And so if you, I don't use these too much, but I, if you only have like one or two eyepieces, you wanna get one of these, cause it will double the number of eyepieces you have in your telescope case. Um, this is a three element, this is a shorty. Usually they're, they're like twice this long. And you put this in and then you put your eyepiece on top and it changes the magnification of your of what you're looking at. And so if you only have like a 17 and I don't know, I'm making up a number like a 25, um, now you've got four because you have this as well. Okay, so that's a Barlow. You can use that as well. And depending on the kind of telescope you have, you're going to have to make sure everything's in alignment. And with a Schmidt, you don't do that, but with like a Newtonian, um, you will have to make sure the mirrors are lined up so all the light is coming into focus at the same point. And to do that, you need a collimator, which looks like this. It looks like it's a tube. It's an empty tube with um, kind of a diagonal in here. And you also need a laser. And using these two things, using the instructions they provide you with, you kind of go back and forth. So you put this in and you'll adjust one thing and then you'll put this in and you'll adjust another thing and put this in. And what you're doing is you're looking for those two circles to light up, um, to be concentric, and then everything's aligned. I typically do this, I wanna say every two or three stargazing sessions, but um, you can do it more or less depending on how much your telescope gets bumped and jostled around. Okay, I hope this has been useful. I'm Aurora with Supercharged Science, uh, homeschool science curriculum and programs for K through 12. Make sure you do download that free astronomy handbook, www.superchargedscience.com slash astronomy. Go get it. It's yours for free. If you like this and you want more, then let me know by sharing this information with as many people as you can. Um, share this video and we want to get our science information in uh, uh, to as many kids as possible so they can enjoy the night sky together with us. So I hope this has been useful. These are the typical accessories that I will bring with me when I do stargazing. Um, again, I'm Aurora with Supercharged Science and make sure you pass this information along to anybody else you think might be useful. I really, um, really, really appreciate your recommendations. And if there is something you'd like me to do a Facebook on, feel free to let me know. Aurora at SuperchargedScience.com. Thanks everybody and I'll see you next time.